Hi everybody, Tom Chapman here, and welcome to my Map Tool tutorial series. This is video 12, and in this video we're going to talk about creating and setting up MPC tokens. So, when we play on a normal tabletop with minis in front of us, we have the miniature out there, but all of the notes are behind the screen, and you're shuffling and trying to keep track of all sorts of different things going on, especially if there's different NPCs and monsters, all with different abil abilities all over the board. And that makes it really tricky behind the GM screen to deal with. I'm going to show you how I deal with it based on the different games that I play. Now I consider there to be two different types of NPC tokens. There's active NPC tokens and inactive ones. Active NPC tokens are primarily used in games like Pathfinder, where the tokens are moving all over the board and the players can see them move, and can see them come up to them or they can move up to the NPC and kind of interact that way. An inactive one is in a game where we really don't have a tactical map like we do in Pathfinder or let's say D&D 4th edition. I consider inactive tokens to be games like the Cypher system where we want that information readily available but it really doesn't matter how the PCs see it because chances are you're not using a map in the first place for those games. So I'm going to talk about each of these individually. The first one we're going to talk about is an active token where the token is going to move and it needs to also contain information for what we're going to use it for. And in this case I've got my Crypt of the Everflame back up like I've been using for a while now and I'm in room 5 and in room 5 I have a shadow that the, MP, that the PCs are going to have to fight. Now, I've got it set to the token layer because it's going to move around and the PCs will be able to see that move on their own screen. For now though, I've got to set it up. When I hover over it, it's still got the same name that it did when I downloaded it from canva.com and so I have to put everything into it. So I'm going to go down to here to my open office program. And I'm going to go down to Shadow. Now again, all that I did to get this was I copied all the text from Fox at Reader and the PDF of this adventure, and I just pasted it in this document, and I kind of went with it from there. So this is straight from the PDF, and really this is kind of all I need. What I usually do is I also add some extra space, so I put a space in front of all of these extra things that I have. And then I also go through and I get rid of any extra lines that make sense in a PDF but don't make sense in here. So for example, skills, I don't need all of this extra space. I'm going to hit delete. And then down here for special abilities, I'm going to remove some of these spaces too, just to save on space and make it a little easier to read in the Math Tool program itself. Now really, that's it. All I have to do at this point is copy or select, oops, is select and control C and copy it. Go to my map tool instance that I need, double click on it, and I'm actually going to go down here to GM notes and hit control V. And that puts all of the text that I need to run this character in the program. Now I'm also going to change its name. Usually, when you're playing over the internet, characters can also hover over tokens. So if, for example, you've got people that you don't want them to know what they're fighting by hovering over, I put enemy in the name, and then in the GM name, I'll say shadow. What this means is on the player's side, when they hover over it, all, there's, all they'll see is the name enemy. But on my side, when I hover over it, in parentheses, you'll see the word shadow. So on the left is what everybody sees, and in parentheses is what the GM sees when they hover over it. Double click to come back in. You'll also see that there's two sections. I have notes and GM notes. So if you set it up in a way that characters can open up any token that they can see, if they double click on this, they'll be able to see the notes, but they will not be able to see the GM notes. Or when they hover over things, they'll be able to see the notes, but not the GM notes. I tend to keep everything down here in the GM notes so that I can mess with it and fiddle with it as needed. Don't forget that when you 
are ready to close out of a token that you've edited, no matter what layer it's in, you need to hit OK. If you hit close, it will cancel any changes you've made and it will not copy over. I still have the rest of my NPCs that were given to me on this PDF document. So what I'm going to do real quick is I need to input these all throughout my map tool instance. So I'm going to do that real quick. At this time, I've now put all of the token information into every NPC token that I have in this adventure. So let me cover a couple of small things that we need to talk about to make your life easier. First off, let me go to the upper level. And let's come down here to room number 12. In room number 12, we have an enemy called a bloody skeleton. Now, if I open this up, there should be four bloody skeletons in this room, and I only have one. So this makes it really easy. I'm just going to select it, hit Control C, and then Control V, Control V, Control V, and I now have four bloody skeletons. I'll put them throughout the room, and that makes copying them really easy as opposed to putting it in each time. Also, if I come over here to room nine, room nine contains a golem. Now, this golem is not a medium-sized creature. It is large, so I need to make it bigger. I'm going to right-click, go to Size, going to say it needs to be large, and now it's exactly where I want it to be. And the last thing I want to talk about is making tokens not visible to players, because nothing's more striking when you walk into, let's say, up here, room one, and you see six skeletons. That pretty much screams, we're about to fight. So I'm going to put these skeletons where I want, and then I'm going to click, drag, and select them all, right click, and say, they're not visible to the players. So now, you see, when I hover over them, they're gray, which means only I, as the GM, can see them. And when the players reveal this room, they won't see anything. One last aspect I'd like to share with you is adding specific notes to tokens so that you don't forget how a certain rule works or maybe a spell. So to show this, I'm going to go to the lower level, and I'm going to find the big bad evil guy at the end, this token right here, Asar. Now, when I was playing Pathfinder, one of the hardest things for me to remember is what is the cutoff for power attack? When does power attack apply in what ways? Now, this is pretty simple here because it's all based off of a base attack bonus and whatnot, but to say the least, it isn't enough to go up to the next level. So I'm just going to put a quick note here, power attack, and this is a plus one, plus one, uh, I'm sorry, minus one, plus two. And then I can put other notes on there, such as that. So I'm going to hit OK, hit Save, and then I'm going to show you some other useful ways I've done this using part six of Curse of the Crimson Throne, where there are a lot of special rules that I need to remember. So for example, I'm going to go to the very last one, the Sunken Queen, because here on the fourth level, we have the big bad evil guy of the campaign, Queen Iliosa. And she has all sorts of stuff. So this is where my notes come in very handy. In this one, I knew that we weren't going to be playing on the internet uh, where everybody got their own screen, so I used everything up here. So, I mean, I put down what she does on every round of combat, how it works, when she runs away with the morale. Uh, luckily, with the way that Pathfinder does their stat blocks, they show all the resistances and everything pretty far up. Here's another one that I should point out. The false Ilioses that surround her all cast different spells. So I have the saving throws down here in the stat block, but what I don't always remember is what does all this stuff do? So when she casts displacement on herself, what does that mean at this level? And I wrote a quick note, last for eight rounds, provides a 50% missed chance. Or, how is confusion going to work, and what do the random die uh, rolls mean? Which are hard to remember too, and it's nice not having to quickly flip back and forth based on what everybody does. The last thing that I use this for is what's great is I can change things on the fly. So let's say 
I cast a spell on this false Iliosa that drops their AC. Okay, I'm just going to change it. Their AC is now 13. And when I hit OK, it's going to stay that way for the next time that I open it. AC is 13. Now with this boss fight, there are seven NPCs in this room, and each NPC will actually last at least two rounds, if not a few more. Our, our main bad guy in the middle is going to last even longer. So I can track HP for each individual NPC by opening it and changing the hit points as we go. That makes this extremely easy to keep track of. So that's how I use this in Pathfinder or other active games where the tokens move around a lot. I'm going to exit out of this. Do not save. Now, the other version of what I have is like what the Cypher system uses, which is inactive, where this token isn't going to move anywhere. I'm not going to move it up to, an, up to a PC and attack. I'm just going to describe everything. But I have the general layout of the room, and then I've kind of changed it to fit Numenera because there's no shadows in Numenera, but there could be a shadow guard on another plane of existence. In this case, I've put this on the hidden layer. So I put this token in the hidden layer, so when I select it in the token layer, I bring up all this information down here. Now this is different because health is easier to track, initiative is easier to track, and a lot of the special abilities are easier to deal with too. So I have, for this game, I have all the important information I need, and I've uh, delineated it using bold, and then afterwards it's just general information. So what I did is I actually created this NPC. So I just took this same picture, and I came in here, and using HTML formatting, I designed what I wanted. And I did that for each NPC in this dungeon. So I changed this completely into an ancient automaton instead of a golem, and all that there. Now, if you're wondering about HTML formatting and you can't quite remember it, I'll include a link in the description below on how to use different HTML formatting and where to go to remember it all. For now, though, that's all I have for this video on creating and setting up MPC tokens. I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Thanks for watching.